Have you ever heard of the phrase, big man on campus? What does that mean to you? I know normally when we think of big man on campus, we think of someone that's an athlete, like maybe basketball, football, baseball, or whatever. But what about those that may be the president of student body? Or maybe a gifted musician, singer, actor, or dancer? Usually we term that phrase for someone who stands out among the crowd at their high school, maybe even college. What a big man on campus. What I'm gonna to talk to you today about is someone who was truly a big man on campus. He stood about six feet, eight inches tall and weighed about 230 pounds. And his name was Melvin Gooden, a former teammate of mine in high school at Wasman High School in Monroe, Louisiana. A guy who was well known and highly recruited. But usually when we think of a big man on campus, it's usually someone that stands out, who gets a lot of attention, maybe media, newspaper, or just from the school recognition in itself. Someone that the crowd normally sees and applauds or recognizes as someone who's in high esteem. But this guy, who's a former teammate of mine, you can imagine all the high school football coaches were trying to recruit him. They were on him like hog on a slop. <laughs> but we had a high school basketball coach named Sidney Smith. He always talked to his basketball players and it was well known not to play football because our high school team for years were very dominant in the city of Monroe among all these high schools and those in the district and the surrounding areas. Wasm was well known, matter of fact, this year, the basketball team won state in the state of Louisiana in their class, including the girls as well. Matter of fact, the girls are repeat state champions. So you can see this process of winning at this high school that's been going on for a very long time. And this guy named Melvin Gooden, my former teammate, he was instrumental in part of that tradition. Now, we all know people that could have, should have, but didn't. Along the journey of life, things happen, the decisions that they made or didn't make that resulted in a negative result and they did not live up to their God-given potential. And that goes across the spectrum. It doesn't matter what it is. It's not just athletics. It's in so many things. It may even be academic. Someone may see that that person is highly intelligent, but along the way, they made some poor choices and didn't live up to what they could have been. Don't we all know people like that? I'm sure those of you that are watching, watching this right now knew people like that. That may even have been you. And things didn't pan out the way that we all thought or maybe you hoped they would. But this tower of a figure, the big man on campus. And the thing is, now he was just 6'8". I'm 6'6", six, six, but in high school I was 6'5", playing with him. And the thing is, we had other guys too. We had six, seven, Donald Lux. We had Charlie Ballot, six, two, and this is a starting five. And Donnie Haywood, five, ten, point man. And everybody had opportunities to play college ball somewhere. But the thing is, Melvin Goodness, who I'm talking about today, the big man on campus because there are people watching this right now that remember him. And for those of you that have never heard of him, now you will, because we played against pros. Far side, Nat turns around, five footer, good on the baseline to the right side, Calvin Nat. Harps with the ball, taking a look to Michael Thompson, inside of Paxton, rolls to the hoop, he doesn't get it. Nat, offensive rebound, he scores. Good move by Calvin Nat, he's got four. Warriors by one. Paxton from Nat to Michael Thompson inside to Nat. Curls inside around Bernard King and scores. And he's got a total of six in the ball game. Alley-oop underneath the Nat. Got a double pump. He's got it. Had to bring the ball back down to the floor. And why do I say we played against pros? People that are in our district, such as Bastrop High School, who won Class 4A state championship back in 1975. And that's the year that Melvin also graduated in 1975. You talk about Northeast Louisiana was dominant in basketball. And Bastrop, they had four guys that got drafted into the NBA that we played against regularly because we were in the same district. You had Kelvin Nett, 6'6", Kenny Nett, 6'3", Eugene Robinson, 6'8", and you had Carl Kilpatrick, who was 6'10". And check this out. 
their high school coach became an assistant at University of Louisiana Monroe, back then called Northeast Louisiana University, but today they're ULM, University of Louisiana Monroe, and he took his players, that state championship team, and those players he coached with him to ULM. Now, our high school coach, Sidney Smith, attempted to do the same thing. He became the assistant coach at Sam Houston State University in Huntsville, Texas. And this was Denny Price, who had just come out of the NBA as coaching in the NBA up under John McLeod with the Phoenix Suns. Now he was the head coach at Sam Houston State. And my former head coach was his assistant. So he attempted to do the same thing that Bastard did and take some of his players who had that winning tradition in the state of Louisiana with him to Sam Houston to make them a powerhouse. Because like Bastrop, Wasman too was a powerhouse team. Even though we competed each against each other every year, we were in the same district. We all knew each other. And this guy, Melvin Gooden, he guarded the top dog centers, the post players. And they all knew who he was. He was not just an anybody. And if any of you know the history of Monroe, Louisiana, as far as athletics is concerned, you may recognize that Monroe, even though smaller than it is, around about 50,000 people or so, has more professional athletes per capita probably than anywhere in the United States. Why is that? Maybe because we have three surrounding colleges, such as University of Louisiana Monroe, such as Louisiana Tech University and Gremlin State University. And ULM basketball team used to come to our high school after season and scrimmage us. So early on, we had exposure to playing against college players. Not just that, we played against professional players, such as Sammy White, the all-rookie of the year in 1976 with the Minnesota Vikings. Then you had Larry Wright, NBA champion with the Washington Bullets. Eight minutes left in the first half. Bobby Dandridge comes out now, Greg Ballard in for Washington. For Zane, rebound of the miss, and here's Wright. Wright's going to be open on the left side. Paul's defense normally is played before he gets the ball, but once he gets it, he's fairly limited. Bernie Bickerstaff giving instructions, and on the steal, here comes Wright for the bullets. That's the biggest lead here of game one. Charlie Homeboy Smith with the Philadelphia Eagles. Even though we're not just talking football, because if you notice anything about football players, they're well diverse. They're very good basketball players also. And these are people among just a few of many that we played against. And they all knew who Melvin Gooden was. Keep in mind, Melvin was 6'8", about 230 pounds. He was a big guy. And boy, you're talking about can get up. I remember Melvin can take two balls and just dunk them. Just like that, no problem. And some people call me a jumper. I was nothing in my mind compared to Melvin because he was strong and he could really get up. Donald Lux was the same way. Wow. But here you have the team from Bastrop. Four guys that played for Bastrop went to ULM. Well, actually it was five of those guys. His whole team went, actually. That coach Vinny took his team with him to ULM. And boy, you talk about they got into the national tournament and all of that. They were a powerhouse team. I don't think ULM ever had a better team. And four of those guys got drafted into the NBA. And here you have Melvin Gooden goes to Sam Houston State. And the thing I think that interfered with Melvin's basketball career was time he got out of high school, time he graduated, almost instantly he got married. A lot of folks thought that was a bad thing to do right after high school. So he took his new wife with him to Sam Houston State. And his heart got broken, so we were told. And he ended up making a decision without talking to the coach. Just went off on a whim from a heartbreak and joined the military. Coach Smith attempted to do the same thing as Coach Vinny did with ULM and taking his players with him to Sam Houston, as well as some of the other locals in the area, because he was a great recruiter in building the powerhouse. And I remember him telling me, because of Coach Denny Price, he had two sons uh, 
Mark Price and Brent Price, who also played in the NBA. And I remember sitting out eating with those guys when they were kids at their dinner table in Coach Price's home. And the thing is, Coach Smith, I remember him telling me about the potential of one having, getting a shot into the NBA. And I just knew Melvin was gonna get a shot because he was a specimen of a ball player. His size. And he could get up and he made the decision to join the military because of a heartbreak. Now for some of those of you that are listening to this right now, you may be wondering what you're gonna do. Uh, you may be in a position, position that uh, you may have great opportunities. I highly encourage you, get some counsel. Get some counseling about what you want to do with your life and making such decisions that can alter your whole future. Because a lot of times when we're young like that, we go on emotion and we react and we do things that we know we shouldn't do. I shared with someone who I know and I consider him a friend and his name is Jim Warridge. He played at Louisiana Tech <clears throat> and later became the head coach at Louisiana Tech University. And as well, he coached uh, Big 12 basketball at Kansas State University as the head coach and also as assistant with the Chicago Bulls. Later, he retired in, uh, as far as in California at the University of Riverside as the basketball coach, then the athletic director there. So we were having coffee one morning, he and my family, and I shared this story with him about our high school and the elite talent that we played against on a regular basis including Victor King, who played with Newerton. Victor was 6'9", and of course, in high school, and we played against him as well, and he goes off to Louisiana Tech, and he gets drafted into the NBA as well. And Melvin guarded him. And you know, the only team we really lost against, we only lost, I think we went 27-4 and four that year. We only lost uh, to two teams, actually, and Bastrop was one of those teams. And they went off and won the 4A state championship, which was the highest class in the state during that time. And I shared that information with Jim Warwich, and he said, you played against pros. You played against pros. Because when you think about all those guys that got drafted, and here we have our team, just as good or even better, athletically-wise, and nobody got drafted. Why was that? What happened to all those great players along the way? Lack of counsel. Not opening up to our coaches and talking to them about what we were dealing with. Helping us make good, sound decisions. Now, for those of you listening to this right now, coaches, if you're listening to this, that's something if you haven't done, you can start doing help guiding those kids, and making certain that they are prepared, whether it's taking the ACT, SAT exams earlier, more than once, at least minimum three times, to at least give them why you should go to this school compared to that school. I never knew the difference. I never knew the difference in NEIA or Division I. That's just something never talked about. Imagine this, when you live in a community such as me, within a 30 mile radius, you got three Division I schools right in your backyard. I guess you just, the way I looked at it, I never even thought of it. I just looked at it, everybody's like that. To later discover that's not the truth because if you have a talent to play on the big stage, such as, for instance, Charlie Ballard, he had opportunity to go to LSU, Ole Miss, and a host of others. But we didn't have good counsel to direct us. Everyone in our area knew where we were going. People just assumed everybody, Coach Smith's team, going to Sam Houston State. That was the attempt. Only Donnie Haywood finished out. Everybody else, such as myself, went elsewhere. Why? Because of things that occurred and we did not disclose and open up to our coach, such as Coach Smith. So when I told Coach Warwich of those that we played against day in and day out, and when he said, you played against pros, you played against pros. And I got to thinking about that. There was Calvin Nett, 6'6", he was from Bastrop. Kenny Nett, 6'3", he was from Bastrop. Eugene Robinson, he was 6'8", uh, from Bastrop. And then you had Carl Curl Patrick, 6'10". And 
Then, of course, Victor King, 6'9". So we played against elite talent on a regular basis. And there was more, such as the 6'10 kid from Ruston. They also had 6'10 and 6'7 guy from Ruston, Louisiana. Then, of course, we had Carroll High School in Monroe, Richwood High School in Monroe, Washita in Monroe, Neville, West Monroe High School, St. Frederick. And these are high schools right in Monroe. And they all had elite talent. I remember a guy named Fred Shackford. Boy, he was only 6'4", but boy, he jumped higher than David Thompson. And strong, and a big guy. Not fat, power, muscle, big guy. He went to Grambling State University. I don't know what happened, but I don't think he finished out at Grambling. So many elite great players, and a lot of you guys know people like that. So by watching this video, what I hope that you take from this is Get good counsel in your decisions. If you get opportunities to go play basketball or do anything in your life, anything in your life, even maybe just attending a college, you as a student attending a college, get some good counsel, give you some direction as to the pros and cons of one or the other to the other. And this is one for you athletes. Here's what I highly encourage that you do. Don't move around. Stay put, make your mark. And I know times are different now in this modern time where one can go to a college, then next thing you know, they can transfer to another college and don't even have to set out like we used to in the old days. Had to set out a year of, you know, to become eligible to play for that university or college. But now with the new rules, things are much different. People bounce around a lot. But the best thing that could have happened to us during that time would be to stay put and make your mark. And when you have issues and disagreements or things that's going on surrounding you that's affecting you mentally or physically, you gotta talk to somebody. Talk to your coach, talk to your advisors, talk to your counselors. Open up, let them know what's going on in your life and maybe they can give you some good direction, some counsel on what you think that they think may be good for you. Then you take it from there and then you make that decision. But just imagine if Melvin Gooden would have stayed put at Sam Houston State University where Coach Denny Price had just come from the NBA. He would have got a shot because all those that he played against and around, they all got into the NBA. They got a shot. And that's all we can ask for, isn't it? Giving us a shot, give us a chance. So work hard. Study hard, practice hard, be diligent in it, and, and don't quit. Perseverance, no matter how hard and tough it gets, you don't quit. That's just like studying. If you're going to study for an exam, don't wait the last minute to try to cram it in because you're not going to make an A. You're just hoping you can pass. Put the time in early. Study on a read, review. Put the time in. And in the end, it will pay off. I have a phrase that I crafted during my retirement and I said to a former college basketball coach that we don't know what others see in us, but we do know what we see in them. So for all those of you that could have, should have, but didn't, someone saw something in you. And maybe you see something in them. Because see, I don't know what someone saw in me. I know what I saw in Melvin Gooden. I know what I saw in Donald Lux and my other teammates. I know what I saw in Coach Sidney Smith, who was such an encouraging and motivator. Wow. He was an outstanding coach. He can get you to run through big brick walls. And you do it smiling and happy. So, don't give up. Don't quit. Don't make rash decisions. Because it can cost you in the long run. And what you might should have been you can and will be if you get good counsel, some direction that can steer you in the direction where you want to be. Robert Wilkins, AKA Basketball Tall, who's the big man on your campus, or was. Is it too late? Some things may be, such as the physicalness of athletics, 
but they're still the academic with the mind. So if you haven't achieved your diploma, it's never too late. You can go back, you can get it. Just don't quit and put the time in, study. And if you're young, athletically, work on it. If you're playing a musical instrument, practice. Put the time in. If you want to be an actor, rehearse. Learn that memorization. If you want to be a great dancer, practice. Put the time in, work on those moves. Because magic doesn't just happen, but people worked at it. Stay tuned, continue to follow me. Press that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also share this with somebody. Because you may say, oh, it's just a video. Hey, it's power in words. And words work when you apply them. See you next time.